Kia ora, thanks for joining us today. My name is Anita Lamstavoska. I am the Postgraduate Taught Recruitment Specialist at the Faculty of Education and Social Work. Today with me, we have um, Professor Liz Beto, Dr. Ian Hislop, and Dr. Barbara Staniforf to talk about the programs we have within the um, Counseling, Human Services, and Social Work space. So um, Liz, Ian, and Barbara, could we start by um, giving us a generic overview of what's available in the PG space, the postgraduate space? Um, sure. We, we have a number of programs in our school um, and they range from um, a master's in social work um, that has a research base to a master's in social work professional, which is for qualifying social workers. We have a master's in counselling um, and we anticipate that that will have a both taught and research pathway. A master's in community and social leadership which will also have a taught or research pathway. Mm. We have a master's of um, professional supervision, mm. both taught and research pathways. And for each of those degrees, you can also um, get a postgraduate diploma or often a postgraduate certificate as well. Perfect, thanks for the information. Um, what opportunities are available for professional development or um, general upskilling within this space? Um, I think probably for people who are already established in their, in their profession in, mm -hmm. in human services, social services, probably the most popular choices would be the professional supervision program, which was certainly upskilling, giving people a new skill set that will help them advance their career. Uh, the other one, I think, is the Master of Social and Community Leadership, which mm -hmm. is more in that kind of leadership space, and also helping people to understand how to develop good programs in the community. Thank you, Liz. A lot of um, our students, they might be um, people who are thinking of a career change. For someone who is um, thinking about like switching careers, is there something they need to be aware of or like bear in mind? Well, the, the um, applied masters, the masters of social work professional that I'm involved mm -hmm. as, as the program leader for is a um, two year professional qualification, a registrable qualification and social work degree that can take you from a previous degree in a variety of areas to um, a professional qualification in social work. Um, and we get a, people from a whole variety of mm -hmm. walks of life, um, international students, um, students from overseas, students from um, Previous careers, I myself studied law and, and eventually ended up doing social work. So people who want to be involved in helping others, um, thinking about the circumstances people are living in, um, improving people's life opportunities, um, giving something back mm -hmm. um, and, and getting some, um, you know, it's a challenging career, but it's an incredibly rewarding career. Mm -hmm. And um, it's never too late to commit yourself to um, a career in the human services. It's um, fulfilling, important work. And we actually do have a lot of people that do transfer from other yes. careers, sort of, they realise that, that the job that they're in really isn't very meaningful mm. and not very fulfilling. And so all of the programmes in our school really um, bring people in who, who want to make a difference. That's really good to know. So for people who are like thinking about changing careers, are there um, particular personality traits or um, career background that would make someone well suited for this career? Well, just to answer that in a very general sort of sense, it, it, it's, um, it, it's, it's difficult to pick particular mm. human types of people that you want. You know? <laughs> nice we get people. A, we get a huge variety of people, but people with, with some sense of empathy, mm. some sense of compassion. Um, and the rest of it, if you're committed, you, you, you can learn. Um, you, people who think about the relationship between structures and circumstances and people's life chances and the outcomes they have as human beings, um, wanting to create opportunities for, for kids and for adults to improve their circumstances, change their life chances. Um, people who are interested in doing something about um, levelling up a, an unequal society. Um, those kinds of motivations make excellent social workers mm. um, and, and counsellors and people who are involved in community services as well. I think there's also a really important quality of sort of curiosity, yes. mm. especially for people coming into the post-grad 
space, that having that natural curiosity, wanting to know more, being willing to engage in, in deeper learning mm. is really important because it is often a step up in terms of people's mm. skills and, yeah. and they have to have a bit of passion, you know, a bit of sort of drive to, to actually make, um, make something happen in mm. their own lives and, and, and then be able to, you know, influence in the community, create better opportunities in the community. Definitely. What about transferable skills? Are there some particular transferable skills that are more valuable? Well, people with an undergraduate study background in, mm. in, in arts or, or um, human services generally are helpful, but that's not always necessarily mm. the case either. I think Liz's point about people with a passion and um, social work, counselling, those kinds of careers, mm. you make changes not only for people that you're working with, but also for yourself and in yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, people who are, who are thinking about, um, about change, change for themselves, changes that make a difference, that, that kind of commitment um, and desire to be involved in, in helping others with their lives um, and helping themselves. Um, th a chance to reflect, to stand back, to reorientate yourself, to, to think about the challenging times we live in and and how we how people can contribute to social change. That's the mm. that's the kind of candidates we're looking for. And we and we have an amazing mm. um, range of people come come and study with us. Um, fascinating range of people. Perfect. <clears throat> Thank you. This is a question that we get asked a lot actually. Um, like a lot of our potential students are people who want to make a difference, but they're not too sure about the difference between social work and counselling. Like, what would you say it's the main difference? Well, I've just been marking assignments all about <laughs> that. Um, I think that, that there is a lot of overlap and mm. it isn't an easy thing to answer in many ways. So um, counselors um, are often thinking about the wider context that their clients are in and social workers are often doing counseling skills with the people that they're working mm. in. So there is a lot of overlap, but I think we'd probably um, say that social work really considers um, the structural inequality that confront the people that we work with um, and makes a commitment to not only looking at the individual but looking at the society and the, the power structures that are mm. in place and, and looks at changing in, in lots of different areas. Um, whereas counselling may actively mm. consider those things but is principally kind of working with the individual or the family or the whanau um, to make change within themselves or mm. the system that they're in. Mm. Thank you. And social workers are often embedded in big complex organisations, mm, yes. the big yeah. institutions, education, healthcare, justice, those kinds of areas. So there, there's also a level of, of sort of organisational practice that is not as common in mm. counselling. It is there sometimes, but that organisational context is fairly large in, in, in the way social workers are working within and between large social institutions. Mm -hmm. So for someone who is already a, so a registered social worker, where can completing the Master of Social Work take them? I think the Master of Social Work is a really good opportunity to mm -hmm. sort of step up in their career. Um, it, it's a combination of, of taught courses and a, a thesis or a research portfolio, but there are a couple of different pathways mm -hmm. into it. So sometimes people might have a postgraduate diploma and that will lead them mm -hmm. into the masters, but I think for for many people, it's the opportunity to upskill, um, to improve their career prospects. Um, I think the most significant thing about doing a, a master of social work is the research component, mm -hmm. because that gives people an opportunity to uh, develop their knowledge and skills in a very particular way and to contribute to the knowledge base mm -hmm. for the profession. We get exposed to a lot of international research, but one of the things about doing a Master of Social Work thesis is that you get to contribute your own research. So local research grounded here that will then contribute to the knowledge base for the profession. It's also a really good step towards further career as a researcher. Mm -hmm. It's the first step often in a research career. So people may be able to go on and take that into a PhD. Okay. A very practical question. Does it um, move people up the pay scale if they complete a it, master's? That really <laughs> varies from organisation mm. to organisation. Certainly for people who are wanting to go into a sort of an academic career mm. or become a researcher or become a policy analyst, yes, having a master's is really important. Mm. Um, in practice organisations, it 
very kind of from no making no difference at all mm. to the pay scale to being <laughs> definitely something that would be considered when your pay is oh, okay. assessed. Mm. And there may be some particular jobs where people might be looking for someone with a master's qualification to come in into a, into more of a senior, mm. a leadership type role. Mm. Mm. Yeah, a lot of people start off in social work and end up in end up in management, mm. um, and, and sometimes upskilling as part of you know studying with us as part mm. of that process. And yep. social work traditionally is regarded as you know high care and low pay, but it's not necessarily true. The wages have increased significantly mm. significantly in the last um, two, three, four years. Social workers aren't aren't badly paid. Yeah. Um, That's really good to know. And, yeah, and, and there's, there's lots of scope for you know, promotions and changes of career. That's one of the things about it. It's, mm. so, it's so varied. There's so many opportunities mm. for social workers. That's perfect, because my next question was going to ask, like, what the career prospects like for, um, for a social worker, for people who want to change careers? Well, the, the, every, every field of um, sort of... Um, human struggle, I guess, mm. <laughs> is, you know, it comes into social work. So if mm. you're talking about um, addictions and vet violence and child abuse and youth offending and, and um, homelessness and all, all those kind of human troubles that people have, um, all the various agencies that have some connection to that. And, and you can have small community-centred agencies and then large government organisations like Oranga Tamariki mm -hmm. and uh, the hospital health system. Um, they all employ social workers in a whole mm -hmm. variety of roles. Um, and people change careers frequently, do lots of different things during the course of a professional life in social work. Mm -hmm. um, and often part of that is people who've done an undergraduate program, they come back, they, they, they do some master's study, they perhaps go on and do a doctorate. Um, a lot of our teaching staff have practised as social workers in the past and have ended up, um, like I have, um, teaching um, social workers. And um, it's just, a, you know, we've got a really, we really enjoy seeing mm. people learning. It's a really buzzy environment. So you've got really passionate teachers, yep. passionate students. Mm. Um, really creative processes. People end up, uh, I've, I've had students who, you know, whatever you do, don't send me to addictions. 10 years later, they've been working at an <laughs> addiction program for, for 20 years, you know. Mm -hmm. they, people find, find niches that they never expect they're gonna find. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the beauties of it. Yeah. Uh, coming back to employability though, mm -hmm. um, we're desperate for social workers in Aotearoa. We, yes. we import social workers from other places in the world. We're on the the immigrant skills shortage list mm. at this point. So um, getting a job as a social work graduate um, is very, very seldom an, a problem. Mm. I mean, social work is, is intimately involved and on the edge of all the changes that are happening around us. We live in times of real challenge and change, don't we? So that environmental issues, mm. um, the, the climate crisis stuff, um, Aotearoa New Zealand coming to terms with its colonial legacy, um, the relationship with Māori, mm -hmm. the relationship to Te Tiriti or Waitangi, how those issues are going to be worked out and resolved into the future. Um, the whole thing about um, immigration issues around um, family violence, um, gender equality. There's, there's so many burning social issues that mm -hmm. social work is intimately involved with. So if people are interested in those things, it's, 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 a, um, it's a place where you can develop mm -hmm. those interests and contribute to those changes. Thank it's you. quite interesting too, because social workers end up in amazing places. I mean, one thing that people probably don't know is that our present Governor General yeah. um, mm. was originally a social worker um, and, mm. and then went on to become a researcher, a public health researcher. Um, and a professor in, um, in, in this faculty, actually, and then various other roles and, and became the Governor-General. Mm. Um, not many people will, will get to that point of yeah. becoming the Governor-General <laughs> because it's a pretty uh, narrow, narrow scope. Yeah. But um, there have also been people like um, 
commissioners in, in areas like housing, mm -hmm. people working at the Human Rights Commission, those kinds of areas that social workers end up in. And a rather alarming number of social workers end up in, in Parliament as um, members, of, members of Parliament. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, it's, it is a career, I think, that ta can take mm -hmm. people in very interesting directions. Mm -hmm. And so, so many transferable skills, which cuts across to the mm -hmm. question you asked before. Mm -hmm. but. Um, all the things about communication, empathy, reading other people, mm. understanding the relationship between the sort of big picture of social structure and the smaller picture of people's life circumstances, differences between generations, cultural differences, everything that facilitates understanding and communication is, is critical to social work. And it's also, of course, hugely important in um, managerial roles, in um, planning roles, mm. um, work with, um, with, with councils, with government, um, the whole social policy area, um, international relations, you, you name it, it's mm. connected with social work skills. Yeah, so it sounds like it's a very promising career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, can we talk about the program itself? Um, would you be able to tell us a little bit more about the placement components within the Master of Social Work Professional or maybe the counselling programs as well? Well, with the professional masters, students do two two placements. Mm. They're approximately three months in duration, and they get a taste of practice in a, in a particular area. We try to match people up with something that they're interested in. Um, the, the, in the second semester of the first year, it's a it's a block placement, and in the second year, it's a longer uh, part time, three day a week placement. Um, students have the opportunity to put their theoretical and um, practice skills into into real life situations in a, in a supported, um, supervised environment. They're well looked after on mm. placement. We have a, a team of highly able and dedicated um, practicum supervisors mm. who look after their learning while they're on placement. Mm. Um, it's um, it's demanding and challenging at times, but um, students, it's, it's where the rubber hits the road, mm. if you like, and students suddenly, oh yes, the stuff we learnt in the classroom makes sense, mm. you know, yeah. and it's, a, it's often a really transformative process for people, I think. People always remember their placements. Mm. They might not remember what happened in, the, in, a, in a particular class, yes. but they remember their placement experiences, mm. and, and they're often really rewarding. Mm. And they get to choose which field they well, want to Well, up yeah. to a point, they, they get to pick something they're interested mm. in or, or something that's going to work for them. Okay. Um, so it's a negotiated process. Mm. Mm. And similarly in counselling, mm. um, there is a requirement for a certain number of supervised hours yes. that occurs in both years. So um, there is a very strong practical component in the counselling program as well. Mm. So my last question is, um, like since COVID and like everyone's like more concerned about work-life balance, how flexible are the programs? Can they um, work full-time and study? Or um, are some courses delivered online? Is that possible? Yeah, some courses are delivered online. The Master of um, Social and Community Leadership is all online. And some components of the Master of Social Work Research are mm. taught online. And occasionally some of the professional supervision electives are taught online. But I'll let Ian talk about the, um, the Master of, of, of Social Work mm. Professional and, and, and the Master of Counselling because they are mm. more campus-based. Well, the Master of Social Work Professional is, is taught mostly in the classroom, apart mm. from the practicums, although there's a, there's a lot of digital material provided as mm. part of the course learning as well. Um, there's a big um, focus on translating theory to practice, social work is an applied doing profession. Um, and that's a component of the learning that students generally really enjoy. Mm. Um, learning about interviewing people, learning about um, how they work with, um, with, with stress and pressure and um, multitask and all, all that kind of um, workplace-based learning vignette type mm -hmm. um, of approach is, is, um, is, is useful for student learning and something that people take to like ducks to water often. Mm -hmm. um, I think in time we're likely to move um, more towards um, online learning. It's, mm. it's obviously the, the way things are moving. 
So it, it will always be a, a, a program that combines mm -hmm. both of those things, mm -hmm. I think. The university is pretty keen on relationship-based learning. Mm. Um, and so while we um, might have a lot of things online, we are really encouraging the development of cohorts so people have support mm. um, and they learn from each other as they go through. Um, the Masters of Counseling is a good example of that. So people who come into the Masters of Counseling become part of a lab group um, mm. and they get to know their lab groups really well over the years. Um, there is also kind of um, thinking about people who are working full time. So the Masters of Counseling courses are all offered um, later in the day into mm -hmm. the early evening so that people can get here after work. So I think there's a range of different options mm -hmm. in relation to um, availability of teaching. And there's certainly flexibility mm -hmm. in terms of part time and, and full time options. Yes, I think you've mm. got six years in total to complete mm. an MSWP. Mm -hmm. You can do it in two, but you can do it part-time, and, and, and a lot of people do. Um, but just building on what Barb said, it's that action, reflection, mm. learning spiral mm. um, that um, is, is a you know, key component in social work learning and, and, and counselling as well, so that you bring yourself to the, to the, to the game. You're, you're, you're part of the process and your relationship with others is the basis mm. for creating change in, in, in the lives of people in need or, or assisting people to, to find changes in their own in their own way and in ways that they define for themselves. So mm -hmm. understanding those power relationships, understanding your place in that um, and, and, and not doing things for people, mm -hmm. but doing things with people in, in ways that, that help them and, 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 and work in, in their context. So those kinds of understandings about the application of power in context and communication are really key. and, and um, once social, once students engage with that stuff, they find a whole world of um, of learning and opportunities. Thank you. That's all from me. Is there anything you would like us like um, us to know that's not covered in the questions? I guess we have really good um, program leaders who can mm. help people make decisions. Um, yeah. People aren't left floundering about what they're meant to take or. Um, so I think that we um, are really approachable and mm. um, can give really good guidance and direction mm. to people who are interested in, in any of these fields where people want to make a difference. Yeah, I'd really encourage people to reach out and find out mm. about what's available and if they're interested in research to you know, have a conversation with one of us about the potential for them to develop research in something that they really care about and mm. they want to see change happen. Yeah. Yeah, and there's, there's no um, social work and counselling, there's no dumb questions, there's no naive <laughs> questions. Um, the, the staff are really committed. Mm. Um, we want to help people learn, that's what we're here for. We're not here to eat our lunch, you know. <laughs> we're we're here, to, here to support students and um, seeing people grow and develop along the way is like incredibly mm. satisfying. That, that's, mm. uh, that's what we're here for. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks, Barbara, Ian, and Liz for answering all our questions and telling us a little bit more about the programs. So, um, thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Bye-bye.